Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2021 Hit Parade Baseball Limited Edition plus Diamond Kings Baseball, six box break. This is a little Hit Parade Diamond Kings mixer. So thanks everyone for getting in on the action. Um, 30 spots, no vet common ship in the Diamond Kings. And in the Hit Parade, I'm not sure if there's if there's any non-pro uniform, but there's no checklist here, so we're gonna go by our no checklist rules, which is in the uh, FAQ on the website. Basically, if they're retired, they'll go to the team they play for the longest. If they're like in a Team USA uniform or a just non-pro uniform, and there's no checklist for that set. I don't know, we'll play it by ear, but if, if they're active, they'll go to the team they're currently on. Usually most of the sets out of there have a checklist, but in case they don't, we'll go by that rule. Big thanks to everybody right here. And all the teams are available right there. Let's roll it, let's randomize it. Five and a two, lucky seven times for the names and teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. After seven, we got Robert down to Michael. Five and a two, seven times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. After seven, we got the Tribe down to the O's. Not sure what font I'm gonna use for June, but it's gonna be some sort of sans serif font. See, I don't know if I like droid sans. <laughs> Fonts are important here at Jaspies, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe, maybe that font right there. All right, Robert with the Cleveland Indians, David with the Marlins, Chris with the A's, Matthew with the Tigers, Kenneth with the Astros, Larry with the Pirates, Sellafield with the Rockies, Chad B with the Diamondbacks, Jake with the Braves, Michael with the Tigers, with the Tigers, Michael with the Rangers, Oliver with the Cardinals, Robert with the Blue Jays, Jared with the Reds, Paul with the Rays, Jason with the Mariners, Steve, you got my Dodgers, Michael with the Brew Crew, Larry with the Padres, Kevin with the Mets, Spencer with the Halos, Simon with the Twins, Jarrett with the Giants, Michael G with the Phillies, Charles with the Cubbies, Diego with the Royals, Jason with the Red Sox, Chris with the Yankees, Robert with the Nationals, Last Spot Mojo, and Michael P with the White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. Let's get all this on one screen here. Let's see if we can pull this down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Let's alphabetize by column B by team. And we're gonna pause the video. When we come back, we're gonna see if there's any trade and then we will have the break. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. There was a little bit of trade chatter, but in the end, no deals were done here in this uh, Hit Parade Diamond Kings mixer. Thanks everyone for mixing it up with us. I appreciate it. There's Robert, last bot mojo, nationals. Last bot mojo, 70% of the time, hits 100% of the time. True math. So we got the six boxes right here, just loose boxes. We did post another one of these. I think the next one is from a uh, fresh inner case. So if you wanna run this back, it's already down to 25 spots if you're watching live, jazbeescasebreaks.com. The limited case is right back here. We'll obviously do that at the end, but let's get this out of the way first. Diamond Kings baseball, pretty solid set. Two autographs or memorabilia cards per box on average. Ultra rare, short printed insert, blank slates, blackout, street art. A lot of frames as well. So a lot of fun stuff in this uh, in this Diamond King. So I appreciate everybody getting in. You know, I've been I've been paying so much attention to to basketball. Any any crazy things happening in baseball? I did want I did catch the end of the Dodgers game last night. What a catch by Tyler O'Neill to rob Mookie Betts of a game-winning walk-off, probably double. I don't know if there's anything 
Miles Mikolas to be reevaluated in four to six weeks. Brewers out outriding Josh Lindblom. Syndergaard shut down again for what six more weeks? It's crazy. Mitch Garver undergoing growing surgery. Steven Strasburg leaving a start early. The Yankees acquiring Connor Cannon to complete the Michael Tockman trade. Jack Flaherty on a 10-day injured list with significant oblique injury. That's not good. All right, let's see what we have in here. Good luck, everyone. Thanks again for getting in. Now remember, veteran commons like that won't ship, but obviously rookie cards and inserts will ship. Right? Frames obviously ship. Art of Hitting is an insert that will ship. Sixto Sanchez will ship, of course. And this, of course, will ship. That's a dual relic, Shane McClanahan. Yeah, it has been injury after injury, Matt. Rough times for Major League Baseball. There's Mel Ott, Art of Hitting. That is to 99. That's for the New York baseball giants, Jarrett K with Mel Ott. Well, just, just, just one major arrest. That Azuna case is crazy. I don't know if he's going to... I don't know what his baseball career is going to be like. I was reading an article where, where, where apparently just because of how strong the, the MLB Players Association is it's really difficult to just it's not like the NFL where you can be like yeah you're released you're done you know so it's hard to just release someone and not pay pay him the money those contracts are pretty pretty ironclad there's Luis Garcia for the Nats last spot mojo strikes again Robert Flores But yeah, Ozuna's a great player, but just those off the field issues. There's Nate Pearson to 49. I think Ozuna's, I think that's just, they, they should not be together. It's a toxic relationship. I wanna say Ozuna's wife was also Arrested, maybe not charged, but arrested. But last year, for hitting him, that's that's just a bad relationship. I don't know. Well, hopefully it'll get it'll get sorted out. They'll see. We'll see what happens with that. Well, we're already in June, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Now, MLB, MLBTradeRumors.com, one of my favorite spots, has a uh, early June edition of some top 40, of some trade candidates. Uh, yes. Hit Parade is uh, almost always one card per box. Another way, pro tip, Jonathan, if you, if you look up the videos that we've done in the past, of those products, because we've done them before, you'll be able to see what the, what get an example of what cards can be pulled. All right, so back to potential trade candidates. John Gray, trade candidate maybe. Or the Rockies aren't playing well. They may move John Gray. Trevor Story, I feel like maybe just got on the IL, so that might be an issue. But Trevor Story maybe may benefit from a trade change of scenery. Mitch Hanniger a possibility, right? A lot of youngsters coming up the ranks for the uh, for the Mariners. Mitch Hanniger could be someone they move. Yeah, Matthew Boyd, fourth on the list. Matthew Stubblefield. The Tigers held on to Boyd when he was one of the most often mentioned trade candidates in 2019, but their club control on him, this is according to MLBTradeRumors.com, 
His club control is beginning to dwindle. Boyd is eligible for free agency after the 2022 season, enjoying a nice year. So as long as he stays healthy and reasonably effective this summer, his trade value could be, yeah, some good trade value. I'm not going to remember all that, Jonathan, but just remind me the next time we, we start this break. I think these are, these are the shorter prints. There's Nick Madrigal for the White Sox. That'll be for Michael. And we got a Pete Alonzo autograph. Nice. Signature portraits. Just uh, just let Owen know that I may ask him for the street address for the uh, order, Hollywood, just so, just so he's prepared with that. Pete Alonzo going to the Mets. Kevin with the Metropolitans. These frames are always fun right here. And we've got a Brandon Lau, Jersey Kings. One out of 25. Nice. Nice. Sounds good, Jonathan. Happy birthday to him. All right. That goes to the Rays. Paul with the Rays. All right. Four boxes to go. We're moving along nicely here. Next box. Let's see what other trade candidates are available. Tyler Anderson for the Pirates. Adam Frazier. I got him on my fancy baseball team. He's actually been hitting the ball pretty well. We got... Yeah, I know, Holly. You already told me last week. I remember that. It's generous. All right, Ricardo Rodriguez for the Pirates, Kyle Gibson for the Rangers, Ian Kennedy for the Rangers. Basically, you're trying to snag some some good players on not so good teams. Kendall Graveman, Rain Mariners. Yimi Garcia for the Marlins, David Peralta, Michael Fulmer. CJ Crone. Haven't run into any Cubs rumors yet. I mean, the biggest Cubs rumor is, is are they going to move Chris Bryant or even Anthony Rizzo by the trading deadline? I think they should. Dylan Bundy, Andrew Heaney, Jose Urena for the Tigers, possibly Rysel Iglesias from the Angels, Joey Gallo maybe. These are just some top trade candidates. I don't know what could what what could the what could the Dodgers use? Dodgers could use just some healthy players. I think Mookie Betts is a little bit banged. He's been playing a lot better the last couple days, but I think his back's been bothering him more than he's letting on. We just gotta kind of get some players together. I think they'll I think they'll be okay. I love the autocorrect on that, Matthew. <laughs> Uh-oh, Vanilla Gorilla retracting his message. I already saw it, though. It's usually not them. A lot of times it's just the players not signing their redemptions. Although it's a different story if you've seen redeemed redemptions out in the wild. In that case, I don't know. Maybe maybe the player signed half of half of what he's supposed to sign and not the rest. I've seen that happen. Ooh, a downtown. I love these cards. Ooh, nice Pete Alonzo from downtown. you've never been to New York, folks, that's exactly what downtown looks like. 
Nice, so you got the Pete Alonso autograph, Kevin, and the Pete Alonso downtown card, which a lot of people really enjoy collecting. When we were in the uh, that the Wisconsin card show, I think that uh, I think there were there, uh, every other every other dealer had a bunch of these nice downtown cards in their showcases. Ryan Jeffers, two color, dual relic and autograph, one out of ninety nine for the Twins. That'll go to Simon. Yes, I see you. Your account works. Why was your why were you locked out of your out account? That's weird. Is YouTube being goofy? Pete Alonso is a David Ortiz. Oh, I thought it was gonna be an autograph. No, it's still nice though. Twenty-two out of twenty-five, a piece of David Ortiz, Big Foppy's lumber, Bat Kings, and that will go to Jason Kirsch and the Boston Red Sox. Looking at the uh, looking at the standings here, buyers, sellers. I think Baltimore has a young crop of players coming up, but they're in last place. They should be sellers, right? The idea, I think, for most for uh, your GM or a you know owner, president of baseball operations, whatever you want to call it. For any team, for any any sport, any franchise, you kind of want to have your core crop of players kind of grow together at the same time. So if you guys, if we kind of have players that are sort of, even if they're still young technically, but if for your team they're old, it's probably a good idea to move those guys, try to get a young core of players to try to grow together and evolve and, and, and blossom at the same time would be the case. Baltimore has a lot of pretty young players. They get... They move the slightly older players, maybe in their last arbitration year, something like that. You gotta move those guys. And try to get some youngsters back in return or something, or draft capital, something like that. International money. What, what a weird season for the Twins. I did not expect by, by the beginning of June, after two months of the season, two full months of the season, the Twins will be at 22 wins. Are they selling? Maybe you consider selling here. Re, kind of retool that team. Rangers. Rangers are already on the youth movement. They're, they're at 22 wins. Yeah, they got, maybe they'll move Joey Gallo. I think that'll be a good candidate for them to move. Try to get something back for him. Angels might be sellers at 25 wins. Nats. Are the Nats sellers at 22 wins? Man, they are eight games behind first. I could, I could see them making some moves. Like, especially, I mean... Oh, they, yeah, that's true. They did let Rosario go in the offseason. So, yeah, maybe Twins are in sell mode. Um, Max Scherzer. You think the Nats will move Max Scherzer? Washington only has 22 wins. You can probably get a boatload from Max Scherzer. There's Ozzy Albies. Any team, any playoff team, any team with playoff aspirations would surely love a uh, Max Scherzer. What's Max Scherzer's contract situation? So he signed a seven-year deal. Wait, this is the last year of his deal. He's got to go. Eleven out of twenty-five. And that is for the Phillies. That'll be for Michael G. This is 
Estevan Floriel right here. And then two color dual relic autograph Nick Madrigal. Mixer Mixer Diamond Kings Limited uh, Hit Parade Limited Edition. White Sox, Michael P. Brian Vormer, what your Reds. Well, where where are the Reds at? Twenty-four and twenty-nine? Dude, they lost by like two touchdowns yesterday. Ooh, Wasn't it like seventeen three? That's rough. Oh yeah, I think you were mentioning yeah. that yesterday. I feel like the Reds look good on paper. I've got Sonny Gray on my fantasy team. But he had a rough start a couple nights ago. I don't know what the there the Phillies right there. Reds are at 24 wins, six and a half games behind. Just trying to think what I mean. They've got some guys. They've they've got some guys on the Reds. Because they could build around like a Jonathan India, uh, you know, Jesse Winkers and those guys right there. Yeah, it was not a good game by the Lakers, Joe P. That's a game you just you just throw away. Not even worry about. Move on. There's nothing to learn from that game. But yeah, there's young talent, and young talent coming up the ranks too, Brian, for sure. But I think I think there may be a, but I don't know who you can trade or who you can buy. I, I guess maybe you try to move Sonny Gray, but you kind of want him on that team too. I don't know. I feel like the I feel like the Reds are kind of stuck, just waiting to see which young talent is going to develop. Which young talent develops and uh, which young talent doesn't, you know, before you find out what you have in that team. I love Luis Castillo, though. I mean, there, there's there's guys there. There's guys there. Maybe you can make a couple moves here and there, but I don't think I think they're just waiting for their farm talent to come through because they've got like they've got guys coming up the ranks. You know, like guys like Hunter Green might be like a year or so away. I know I'm missing some other the other Reds prospects maybe a year or two away. Maybe kind of a waiting game. Does AD play? He, I don't know. If you're Anthony Davis, maybe you you try to put in 15 minutes just to say, just to grind through that game. I I, I guess, but. But it's less so much Anthony Davis because Lakers have played games without Anthony Davis before and have looked pretty good, but you can't have Dennis Schroeder going 0 for 9 from the field. Like, But yeah, when people are like, hey, LeBron can take over games and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, but, you know, LeBron can only, even in his heyday, LeBron can only do so much. He can't have his, his starting point guard go 0 for 9, score 0 points from the field. That doesn't help LeBron. LeBron can only take over because his supporting cast actually does something decent. You know, so I think everyone's misinterpreting, oh, well, LeBron will just take over. So like, yeah, well, every time LeBron takes over, look at what his supporting cast is doing. They're playing decent, at least decent basketball. The Lakers have not. His supporting cast has not played decent basketball. There's Joey Bart, dual relic and autograph for the Giants, Jared K. Yeah, going back to the Reds real quick though, I feel like they're kind of in a in a no man's land. 
you know, they're kind of in a no man's land. It's like they can't really be buyers. They can't really be sellers because all their selling options are like prospects, you know. They're just kind of stuck in the middle, I think. I think, I think, I think the Reds will look pretty interesting in the next couple of years, though. Let's see. What about the Diamondbacks? I don't know. Diamondbacks could be could be sellers as well. Rockies, I think, should definitely be sellers. Because like the Diamondbacks still have some young, youngish, decent talent in there. I don't think they really have to make. They've got guys like Haven Smith. They don't really have to make too many moves. There's Jazz Chisholm. There's Jazz Chisholm right here. But I think it's the Rockies that are, that are going to have to make the biggest moves. Right? Because the Rockies have like guys like Trevor Story and a solid pitcher like Jonathan Gray. There's a lot of teams that could use a Trevor Story or a John Gray. All right, sixth and final box, then we'll get into the hit parade. Hi, Steve. What's going on? Order for Maine. Is that code for something? I don't know what that means. Yeah, Rockies need an overhaul. But they got to move, like... Well, they got some youngsters that are decent, but they've got some old... Some, they can move a Charlie Blackman. They can move a Trevor Story. They can move a Jonathan Gray. And then, you know, I mean, they already moved Arenado. So at this point, move some of those guys and just and just overhaul it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know too much about the owners and GM, but I, I, I know fans are probably... Uh, oh, Steve was lagging 40 minutes behind. Lesson learned. Everyone, make sure you're watching live. Always double check. But yeah, I, I don't think going back to the Rockies really quick. I don't know if the Rockies fans are too thrilled with with Rockies front office. At least. Yeah, look at all these injuries. Joel Embiid might not play the next game. Coach K retiring. I know we're in a baseball break, but did you see Brad Stevens is moving to the front office. Danny Ainge has retired, right? And now has resigned. And not retired, maybe, but has at least resigned. Brad Stevens is now in the front office, which I thought was weird. Because I thought Brad Stevens was like a young coach. Like he, I thought he'd want to be on the floor more often, but I guess for now he's in the front office and now they're searching for a head coach. So well, let's see what happens in Boston. So there'll probably be big changes in the offseason for the Celtics because now the team is not being built in the image of what Danny Ainge wants. It's now being built in the image of Brad Stevens, which could be could be a real different real different philosophy. Nice Dylan Carlson, two color dual relic for the Cardinals. That'll be for Oliver. Jones, Pete Alonzo, Gray Frame. You thought Stevens was sliced bread? What do you mean? Like Brad, Brad Stevens is a basic coach? Is that what you're saying? Remember two years ago when Brad Ste when there were articles on ESPN saying, is Brad Stevens as good as a player, as important as a player? There's Estevan Floriel, Yankees. Not to say coaches aren't important, but. Yeah, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yeah. That's exactly what I'm saying too, Stubblefield. I thought I thought Brad. Everyone was saying Brad Stevens was like the best thing since sliced bread. 
articles written about like how good he is, how he's like a sixth player on the court. You know, that's that's how influential he was as a coach. But now they, they put him in the front office. It seems kind of weird. Brad Stevens is not very old. Is he already ready for, for, for front office work? Brad Stevens is, I mean, for a coach, seems young. He's 44 years old. For a coach, that seems awfully young. All right, thanks, everybody. That was the Diamond Kings. Here comes the uh, baseball. Am I, did I grab the right case? This is the only case we have. Yeah, limited series 21, it says on the description. All right, good luck. Here's the good stuff here, too. Got some solid stuff in Diamond Kings, but you can get real potential monsters here. Some graded cards in here in the mix, too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think Adam, who's uh, Ray Rice in the chat, Adam, I think, was was suggesting that they move that they move Jalen Brown, maybe? You know, I don't know. Something's got to happen with that team because a couple, a few years ago, you know, people thought that that was going to be that that Celtics team was a was a championship team in the making. They had so many assets too in the draft, which they got a lot of players, but I don't know. Did that work out? All right, let's see what's going to work out here. Be sure to follow the good people at Hit Parade. We've done a lot of work with them. They're pretty good dudes. They visited here. Back in the day, Be before pandemic, post pandemic. All right, first one out of the gate is Christian Pache. Nice. Looks like from an archive set right there. Rookie auto for the Braves. He's on the IL right now, Jake. But if he gets back on track, he's been on the IL a couple times. If he gets back on track, could be a nice, nice speedy dude. My daughters can thank your Cubs for seeing the Padres. Thank you. Well, I'll reserve the thanks until the end of the season. If it matters by the end of the season, then I'll be like, thanks. If it wasn't for that sweep. A lot of games to go. Next one is going to be is going to be Christian Yelich. Wow, Miami edition. That is from 2015. 2015. Uh, Tops finest baseball. Miami Marlins, David with the fish. And speaking of finest, folks, we've got 2021 finest baseball pre-orders going on right now. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. You can pre-order now. Get your teams before someone else grabs them. In finest, see? We've got my Dodgers in finest. Yeah, that should be fun. That drops on Friday, boys and girls. All right, next one. We've got Carlton Fisk. 47 out of 50, jersey and autograph. Carlton Fisk. Game use memorabilia. From Definitive, Red Sox edition. Going to Jason and the Bo Sox. Oh, yeah, you do actually, actually do have the Dodgers right now. A lot of boxes to go. Let's find some Dodgers in here. Well, Dodger Joe Mojo. Yeah, and it's not looking good for the Lakers here, I mean, that's for sure. Still a couple games left. It ain't over till it's over. We've got, for the Reds, Jared Denton, Ken Griffey Jr., three-color patch and autograph. Five out of ten from upper deck. Nice Reds edition of Ken Griffey Jr. All right, next box. What do we have here? We've got 
Francisco Lindor, another card from Topps Finest Baseball. Remember, you can pre-order the latest Topps Finest Baseball on jazbeescasebreaks.com right now. Got to plug that. Robert Flores with the Tribe. Drops on Friday. If you're watching live, pre-order now on jazbeescasebreaks.com. The brand new Finest dropping on Friday. jazbeescasebreaks.com. They say you have to... It's like the, like the comedy rule of three. You, got, you have to say... If you listen to radio advertising, they say things three times. Keep repeating the phone number. There's a reason why. They say, say it three times, it'll lock in. Pre-order Finest Baseball. JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. We've got Jacob deGrom. 009 out of 299. Nice archival autograph from Museum. Mets. Kevin with the Mets. Four more to go. Another one here. A lot of times in the limited edition series, we usually, there usually is one or two graded cards. We haven't seen one yet. It's not always guaranteed, but generally, let's see what happens. We got, ooh, Jersey and Auto, Vlad Guerrero Jr., 47 out of 75 for the Bluebirds. Robert Flores with Toronto from 2021 Tier 1 Baseball. Sharp. Next one. I think it goes landscape. The next one is, oh no, it goes this way. Byron Buxton, 32 out of 32 from Topps Archive Signature Series. Nice autograph right there. For the twins, so it goes landscape this way though. Nice Buxton for Simon and the twins. 32 out of 32. Two more to go. All right, next up is this way. A little bit of a thicker card here. Looks pretty nice. I don't know who it is yet. Oh, it's Jack Flaherty. Nice. Three-color patch, an on-card autograph, 13 out of 25, Captain Jack Flaherty. I think he's, a, he's, a, he's from Southern California. I'm pretty sure he's a, he's a local kid here. Cardinals, Oliver Soria. He's going to miss a while due to oblique strain. But he is, yeah, he was born in Burbank and went to Harvard Westlake High School in Los Angeles. Pretty fancy high school. And then, uh, then w intended to go to the University of North Carolina, but ended up being selected in the late first round for the Cardinals. I think that team, I want to say that team also had... Thomas up? No, Thomas is in the meeting. Anyway, I think that Harvard Westlake team with Lucas G uh, with uh, Jack Flaherty also had Lucas Giolito and maybe one other guy. I think they were all on the same team. Not in the same class. I think there might have been different ages, but I think they were all on the same team. All right, the final hit in the uh, Hit Parade and Diamond Kings Baseball Mixer. Thanks, everyone, for getting in. Appreciate it. And another one is in the store right now. Um, and there's only 20 spots left in that one. Last one here is a cubby, Anthony Rizzo from Tribute Baseball. Going to Charles and the Cubs... That is 38 out of 60 from 2020 Tribute Baseball. 
there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for breaking with us. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.